What's going on everyone? So Vernon Carey thought he found a home with the Utah Jazz, but then the Utah Jazz made some changes, made some adjustments this offseason and ended up waving Vernon Carey. So now Vernon Carey needs to find a new home. He is still only 22 years old. He is old enough to have been drafted in this year's draft and has a lot of upside and potential. This is a guy that was really hyped that many believe thought could potentially be uh, a real fixture in this league at the center position. Um, and he ends up going in the second round, 32 pick in the 2020 draft, which is, you know, yesterday, <laughs> not literally, but, you know, a couple years ago. And since then, he's kind of just been this journeyman. But at 22 years old, 6'11", 270, this is a guy that can really make an impact on a roster in the right position. Now, if you look at his numbers, they're not going to stand out to you. I mean, he has career averages of two points, uh, you know, one and a half rebounds, an assist, a block. But with his age, his youth, bit of athleticism, his ability to impact the game on both sides of the basketball, he could be very valuable in the right situation. Um, this is a guy that, you know, in the G League was putting up numbers on any given night of like 25 points, 12 rebounds, and 8 assists. This was a guy that could literally do everything. Uh, and granted, the G League isn't the NBA. Uh, sometimes guys are really good in the in the G League, and then they come to the NBA, and they're just not the same, right? They're just nowhere near the level in which you want them to be. But the Los Angeles Lakers are looking for another center. Uh, they do have a Jackson Hayes, who is kind of their project center and a guy that can uh, fill in a lot of what the Lakers need, but they want more depth in that position. They want to kind of get back to that 2020 uh, type of Lakers basketball, right? They want to get back to having a, having a roster in which you have Anthony Davis with the ability to play the four, but at any point in key moments or key matchups or something, you can move him to the five. But in the meantime, you have that JaVale McGee, that Dwight Howard. And the Lakers look at uh, Jackson Hayes as their sort of JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard. And yes, the Lakers want versatility. I mean, if you listen to what Rob Palinka talked about in his search for a center, then Christian Wood is the ideal scenario, but how likely is that? Now, there is a lot of talk and reports and rumors that, hey, if he just continues to get vet minimum deals, which is all that he's being offered right now, then he's headed to the Lakers. And if that's the case, then forget anything else because I think that they'll what they'll do is they'll sign Christian Wood and then they'll maybe bring in like a Castleton or something like that to kind of round out the roster. But if all else fails, the Lakers do want Bismack Biombo. But again, what ends up happening if those two guys are off the board, right? The Lakers are kind of waiting around, being patient, seeing what happens, seeing what develops. Would it hurt to bring in a guy like Vernon Carey who can be your you know, backup center? He would still definitely be a project big, right? He's not a guy that I think is going to come in and dominate the game of basketball or, you know, be a, a 20 and 10 center overnight. But I do think he's a guy that, you know, in, in spot minutes can really provide some just quality hustle minutes, right? He's not a guy that really stretches the floor. He's not really a guy that um, is, is going to light it up offensively, but he is a guy that can protect the rim. He is a guy that can be physical and strong and impact the game on a multitude of levels. And this is a guy that I think with the right development, with the right culture, um, can be a guy that ha helps a team have success, right? I really do. I think that he's a guy that he has nice intangibles. He has a lot of things that you want to see from a you know, just a, a starting level center or even just a backup center. Now, he just needs somebody that is willing to take the time to, to invest into him and put him in a position to succeed. Even if it's just like bringing him in on, uh, and bringing him back and forth through the G League and the NBA. Like, that's always something that you could do as well. But I, I don't hate the idea, right? Like, if all else fails, bring in, you know, Vernon Carey. Um, Vernon Carey is a guy that a lot of people throughout uh, over the last season because a lot of people really wanted um, you know another center beyond Mo Bamba and Vernon Carey was available and then he ends up going to the Utah Jazz and a lot of people were disappointed about that but I think if you I still lean like if you can't get Christian Wood can't get Bismack Biombo, 
I still personally, and this is just me personally, I kind of lean towards going the more vet route, right? Bringing in Colin Castleton and then going with, you know, uh, uh, Dwight Howard or maybe a JaVale McGee ends up getting bought out or, you know, um, maybe a DeMarcus Cousins, somebody like that. I'm still my ideal center still. Again, this is just me personally. Is Hassan Whiteside. I'm still in the Hassan Whiteside camp uh, alongside Anthony Davis. I just think defensively that would just be monster. Solves your rebounding issues and just I think that would be solid. Um, and he may be willing to kind of buy in to the role since he's out of the league right now. But if you know if the Lakers were to say, okay, like we're not going to be able to get the ideal center we want, let's just go get a big body. Right, bring in a current uh, 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 Vernon Carey, right? Bring him in, allow him to kind of develop with the Lakers, give him kind of spot minutes and see what he can produce. And maybe you get some quality minutes out of him. Um, you know, maybe even bring in, uh, you know, if you don't want to go the the Castleton, you want to kind of like let him stay on a two, two way or whatever, and you kind of want to let the young guys kind of develop a little more and maybe bring in a Vernon Carey, maybe then at that point, maybe you do bring back a Tristan Thompson, right, to just kind of be a, a vet and, and be a, a culture setter and a guy that can work with Vernon Carey and kind of help him um, just kind of understand the ins and outs. I don't hate that idea either. Even for Jackson Hayes, I don't mind that idea, right, because he is a guy that has won an NBA championship that would buy into whatever role is given to him, um, a guy that has can be put in, in a spot and has chemistry with LeBron and was solid in the minutes that he played for the Lakers last year. I don't hate that idea, right? It's like, okay, well, let's bring in the the project and carry, bring in Tristan Thompson and kind of see and let him kind of work with these guys, right? I, I don't think that that's a terrible idea. I mean, I'd still want to like bring in like Kareem and all those guys and kind of work with these guys and, you know, try to develop the, the ins and outs. But I do think having a vet locker room guy that has been there, done that, you know, has also been a journeyman in a lot of ways that can kind of help these guys get focused, get locked in, I think adds a lot of value. Um, and so, I mean, if if tomorrow the Lakers sign Vernon Carey, I'm all for it. I think it's a low-risk, high-reward type move. He's a guy that can just provide you some stability. Um, I imagine he'd be willing to buy in on whatever his role is because – you know, what's the alternative, <laughs> right? So tell them, you know, you come in, some nights you might play, some nights you might not, some nights you're going to get 10 minutes, some nights you're going to get, you might get 30 minutes, right? Anthony Davis is out for a game, we give him the night off or something, right? And now you're our only other big behind Jackson Hayes, you know, you're going to play probably 20 minutes a game, you know, or, you know, if Jackson Hayes has the night off and now you're our only big, then you're going to play 20, 20 minutes that night, right? Because we want to keep AD's minutes low, Stuff like that, right? Or even play alongside Anthony Davis. I don't hate it. I don't. Um, again, it's it's not my favorite signing. It's not, but I I'm not against it. If the Lakers bring him in. I'm all for it, right? If he can if he can come in and he can buy in, play the role that we need of him, be willing to work and develop. You can't have like look. You you have let's say you have Hayes. Let's say you bring in Vernon Carey. Let's say, uh, you know, you got Colin Castleton. That gives you three development bigs. You only need one of them to hit, right? Like, if you get two of them, then it's a home run, right? Like, let's say Jackson Hayes is great. Jackson Hayes already has a lot of really great quality. He's a great pick-and-roll defender as a big man. Great lob threat. Um, he's a guy that you can dump the ball down to and finish around the rim. He's got good athleticism. He's got a lot of things that are very valuable especially alongside Anthony Davis, right? So if you can kind of develop him and kind of mold him into the type of ideal center that you want, then that's great. And then, you know, if Colin Castleton continues to display and that can translate into the NBA, there you go. Now you got two guys. And then if Vernon Carey, if he ends up evolving and, and kind of becoming that, it just gives you more insurance or maybe gives you a trade chip later on down the line uh, if you if you have him locked in long term. I mean, there's, there's a... There's, there's, it's low risk, high reward, right? In a perfect world, Vernon Carey comes in and in two years, he's legit starting level center, right? I mean, he's 22 years old, right? So he's still young, 
right? You give them two years to develop, maybe at, you know, 26, 24, um, 25, somewhere in that ballpark, right? He's ready to go, and he's just starting. If that if that ends up happening, then that's an absolute home run. A guy that you got for pennies on the dollar that you kept around, you worked on, you developed, and now he's earned his role, or even in a backup role, right? Like, let's say, let's say it is Colin Castleton that becomes the guy, right? And Jackson Hayes is kind of, you know, not really much improved, but Vernon Carey is really stepping up. Well, now you can unload Jackson Hayes or let him walk or, you know, trade him if he's on a long-term deal and bring Vernon Carey as your backup. It doesn't hurt. I just, it's just the Lakers are, they're trying to contend, right? They're trying to win an NBA championship. And my only kind of gripe would be, you know, that's the reason I want a veteran guy is because if you're trying to win an NBA championship, within the next year or two, then having like three d- development bigs, probably not the best scenario, but you know, um, doesn't mean you can't win without them. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? You like the idea of Vernon Carey? Do you not like the idea of Vernon Carey? Um, is he a guy that you think, yeah, bring him in, um, develop him, let him get some minutes, see how he works. You know, you're, if you bring him in, you're bringing him in on a non-guaranteed, right? So, again, it's low risk, high reward. Maybe, at best case, he's a high energy guy that you can throw in off the bench that, you know, can just, as long as he's not messing things up, right? He can just stay consistent, then that's all you can ask for. But anyway, love to hear your thoughts and opinions, however you feel, down in the comments.